Welcome again to my um, OSGI intro series, um, this section 7, application. In this last video we will create an application based on OnRoot template with a web and RESTful API. Uh, we will package our application and run it as external jar. We will look into what happens to component in runtime and how is GI handling the changes. So let's get started. We covered quite a lot in our um, demo series so far. So what's left is putting everything together into an application. And an application is a um, runnable unit that you can run independently outside of this um, development studio. So let's get started. So according to the end root, uh, we need to create a package with application suffix and that will set up a template for everything we need. And if we look inside, we get um, a website template that we can use with Angular and Bootstrap some static content that's our application itself and we get um, a RESTful API implementation in the form of this class here which is deployed as a component which is exposed to RESTful API there's some um, documentation about that um, what this is basically saying that there is a get um, rest method on this URL and we'll look where the URL is uh, which accept the string and um, change it to uppercase so we'll exploit that and we're gonna create our um, application implementation into this um, uh, deployable class so if you read the documentation uh, on the tutorial uh, you can get some more information uh, about this template and, and for now we're just going to fix a few things and we're going to run the, um, the application so we, okay that's our booking application and uh, we need to do some resolve and possibly all it needs and we'll do the same here and we'll go to an application and we can run this so we're running the bnd run file and uh, you can see that port 88 is now open and we go to index we get access to that application on and we can do what the application says we can go to uppercase to Gadi and we get Gadi to uppercase to it again so uh, looking and we get application so the application is working and we can start uh, wiring everything together so if you remember we have a booking service and we want to use the booking service in osgi context so to do that we can go into our bnd and we can say on the build path we want to add our api so we can consume it um, and save it uh, and now from our booking we can just directly say reference Booking is booking API, and this should come with an error, of course, because if you remember, um, we need to resolve that to an actual service. So we want to use the provider to provide that service. So we save. Okay, my mistake. Uh, we want to do that all in the run. So we go 
at the provider and we pick it up and we get the service reference. So now the service is injected into our application. Remember, we didn't uh, specify in code what service provider to use. We just declared an intention uh, to use that booking. Now we're going to create, um, duplicate this, and create another API point for uh, get booking. And we're just going to return a booking. Okay, so everything started, we get a new service instance, and now we can go into the URL and say REST. and we get a hello. So we got the booking service injected into our application, which implemented REST into API. We then said, okay, we have another REST point for um, the greeting and calling that, we'll call the booking service and call the met greet method on that booking and return the results. So let's try something interesting. Um, first of all, I want to see what actually get injected because I want to see the class. So I'm going to do a little refactoring here. Uh, I'm going to say, let's take this down out. And we do what we did before, which is providing a setter. So we can see what's injected. what's getting injected. So we're getting a class instance of the booking implementation. And now we want to say, okay, well, maybe we want to do other things with this booking interface. So we end our application. We're gonna add the actual adapter. So adapter is independent. It's not part of the um, application class. It's independent, and you can see the moment we drop, drop that, we get an adapter instance, and the adapter instance getting the same booking service implementation. So that this is important. So we dropped another adapter um, component, which is registered to the same service. If you look at the adapter, it's asking for the same booking. Uh, service implementation and in runtime it's getting an instance of that service and if we look at the class instance it's exactly the same class instance so both application and adapter running independently into in the runtime using the same service so let's experiment with that a little bit um, it doesn't tell us which is which so let's put a little bit of uh, help here help us out. So when the reference is coming in, we're going to say this is the adapter area. This is from the adapter. There we go. So this is the reference the adapter is getting. And this is the application. So notice what happened here. Um, the service was instantiated um, once. There is no other reference in runtime. We were working with the adapter, and every time we stopped and, and compiled and make a change to the code, we got a new uh, instance of the adapter, but the booking implementation stayed the same. It's the same reference. Still, we are using the same reference. Now, when we looked at the um, adapter for the application, the application start and stop, stop and start, and, and we still get the same service reference. 
Now let's go and change the service in the provider. And let's make a change here. Let's say we're not returning hello and hello you. Now what we're getting is we're creating a new instance. There's a new instance and both application and adapter being uh, refreshed with the new service. So this is one of uh, my top favorite really. So we have a runtime. Uh, the runtime is running all the time. Every time we make a change to one of those jars, it's independently creating a component, independently stopping the, run, the component in runtime and deploying a new version of it and starting it and doing all the wiring between all the services and all the components, so everything getting the, being refreshed, but only what has changed. So if there was another service that didn't change, the wiring would stay the same. If we change just the provider, uh, everything that links to that provider is be being refreshed with the new service. If we only change the adapter, only that adapter is getting an instance or being stopped and start. But if the service that it's registered to hasn't changed, we get the same reference. So this is this is quite powerful. So in our application, we wrote just a tiny bit of code here to wrap it up. Now we can go into our um, uh, Gimby run file and we're going to export that. Uh, we're going to stop here and we're going to do export. So, so far we were just building stuff. Okay. So we'll get all the initiation that we logged and we can go back to our and everything is working. And if I stop that, it stopped working. So initiated, once initiated, we get our code. So that concludes our uh, application. Uh, we looked at services, we looked at components, we looked at uh, how to unit test um, individual code or in the runtime, in the OSGI runtime. We looked at how to wire it all up into an application and how to wire a component to each other and what happened when you deploy different components separately or together or when there are references. Um, I hope to expand on that tutorial in future episodes um, and waiting for your comments. So thanks for watching.